I go shaking my tits for the press. I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters. Nobody gets into any fights. Nobody drinks too much. Nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. <laughs> Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! <laughs> No idea how I got so barbaric. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to This is the Police. Uh, this first episode is going to have a lot of story. or probably be half story. I'm, I'm not sure how long I'll carry it on. I actually already made this video earlier, but I forgot that when I get into my software, I have to change something around every time or else it doesn't want to record my mic properly. So, I have to do this again, which is whatever. I'm fine with that. I just hope that, you know, I don't do something this time around. That'll be also very stupid. So anyways, I'm not going to ramble on because I spent half an hour rambling earlier. I'll speak in when necessary and explain stuff, though, again, for sure. Uh, so let's just get right into the story. Uh, new game. Uh, we will continue and brace yourself for some more cinematic story. I'd also like to emphasize I really love the art style of this game and I hope that you guys do as well. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. 
And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. Yeah. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. <laughs> okay. Throughout several parts of this game, you're going to be able to choose some conversation points. Uh, it's going to be... It's not primarily decision-based. Although there are going to be several decisions throughout the game that will affect how things play out. I'm going to start right with here. I don't want to say too much without giving some things away. I want to say that I never have actually finished this game. I've played through it a couple times. Most of those times we're trying to record this before I had my current software that I have now. Um, and then once I just tried to play through it when I was just playing it. And I never actually did get around to going through the rest of it. I got to night like 20 or something and... Uh, some things were happening and it ticked me off and you'll find out with me exactly what those were so until then let's just go ahead and get right into this yesterday the mayor's office officially announced your resignation did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance uh i'm gonna say this one Mayor Rogers is a dishonorable, corrupt politician, and he's been waiting for an opportunity to get rid of me. We're gonna go hard. Hard and fast. You already know the name of your successor. I think they'll bring in some new blood. A fresh mind to take a look at the problem. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis, Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. Resigning, I'm sorry. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Oh, just resigning. I don't know what I'm thinking. I can't speak tonight. <laughs> Anyways, perhaps. Sounds possible if you think the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Honestly. If a short-term agreement with the Mafia helps us solve or prevent a crime, of course, we'll try to make the best of it. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely. He's a weird and corrupt little man. Of course it's the reason. Personal relations are always important, no matter what anyone says. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. <sighs> Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. 
That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be no here No smoking, at all. people. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The, the mayor's an asshole if you haven't figured that out. All people. <laughs> don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> oh my. Okay. There's still more stories, so you have to hold on for another few more minutes. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Okay, that's the main straight up block of uh, the story there. There's two different shifts. You've got shift A and shift B. Now, uh, Kochi, Yancey, Curdy, just, just Baki. Probably spelling that wrong. I apologize. Asanu, Sano, ugh, Austin, and Price are all cops. They're going to actually go out to crime scenes and try to arrest people, face them down, etc., etc. Mole, DeBrito, and Armstrong are investigators. If there's, an, if there's a situation happening, like gangs or something building up, you'll have to send them down to investigate and try to shut everything down. If the game can get a little more complicated once you kind of go along. The first several days are actually fairly easy. So let's go ahead just right now. Get right in the day two. And we actually get to play the game. Or the, the story of the game. This is obviously the diorama of the city. One, 
And you're the first call. Hit and run. Everyday mall. A married couple exiting a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who's been digging through a trash can. Oh, I might feel like sneezing. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. I'm gonna send Price with Coach. Now, if you see the stars under the names, I believe it's 120 stars is average. If you have 120 stars, you should have a fairly average piece of time doing any job. If it's less, you're gonna do worse. If it's higher, you're gonna do pretty good. So the idea, one idea. I hope the song's not copyrighted. Anyways, uh, Tochi and Price here are gonna go into the fight. Actually, let me look at something. Music! Off, because I have no idea if it's copyrighted. Uh, if it is, I'll cut off, try to cut out the little bit of audio that was in there. Anyways... So if you send someone really weak with someone who's really good, you should be able to capture the person, and then the person who's low will get an extra 10. Oh, and they get plus 10 stars every time they do something good. So we're going to send them out just like they are. Okay, now the, f the fight. A theater manager reports that during a show of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater, carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. So I'm going to send, again, one of my lower people with one of my best people. Now, as you can see down here, there's a bar right here. The bar, when it hits the top of their, of their nameplate, they're at the destination. When it goes back to the bottom, they're back at the uh, police station where we can send them out on a mission. So. Up here, you're going to get your responses. The offender was caught. Officers were not harmed. So they each get plus 10 to their skill. So now they're going to be on their way back. As you can see, the bar on their nameplates is slowly going down. The report on the fight. Offender was caught. Officer was unharmed. Civilian was also unharmed. 230, now 100. Okay, armed robbery. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with a whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate number. The owner is one Jeanette Brown, who lives in the suburbs. I am going to send Purdy with a Sano. And of course, forgot about this one. A brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and our security guard is off duty tonight. Oh no, I have time to hold, actually. Sometimes it's advantageous to let the timers click down a little bit. It doesn't matter when you get to them, as long as you get to them, at least as far as I know. But now I can send two people. I'm going to send, actually, no, I'm going to send Kochi and Price on this one again. Managing your people is really critical, especially as you get more cases and different stuff down the line, as well as when they're farther out. Because if you don't have any cops in your station, you cannot respond to a call, and that's not a good thing. Assault. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. We're going to send Yancey and Austin. Now, certain situations are going to give you this. Armed robbery, suburb, which I sent some people on a little bit ago. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and laughter can be heard through the living room window. These are the ones that stole into the uh, store and stole all the adult movies, by the way. You'll get three different choices. Knock on the door. Open up. Police. Sneak into the house through an open window. Or turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded. Logically speaking, they're just kids. Teenagers. They broke into a store stupidly. They're not... They shouldn't be violent. So we're going to knock on the door, just say, open up, police. Vendors caught, officers unharmed, they each get plus 10 to their points. Now, there's a report on the fight. The offender was caught, the officers were unharmed. Price gets another 10, which means Price is finally starting to jump up in numbers, making her... 
more useful. So that's the really good thing to do early on is figure out all that and try to get your weaker people at a higher level so they can actually perform better. Now, for a report on the assault, the offender was caught, the officers were unharmed. We'll close through that, and I believe yeah, at 20, the night will end. And then we can go ahead and end the day, because there will not be any more calls. Now, as you can see, we have this. Now, if you look beside their names, there's going to be these blocks of green, or in her case, yellow. That represents how tired they are. <laughs> the more you use them, the more tired they're going to be. Really, just working a day or working like a bunch of cases in a day will tire them out. Like, Price, I think, was sent on a lot more. And again, I don't think she was sent any more than the partner. I don't remember. But, you know, what I could do is I could right-click, or I could click on them, left-click, and say, order to work tomorrow. They're not going to like it. They're also going to be tired again. And we'll have to show up for the following day as well instead of doing a flip day because shift B works one day, shift A works the next, shift B works, and shift A. So for now, though, we're going to go ahead and end the day and more story. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks... I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror, I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business. And I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later... They'll put the finger on you. And and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, San pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. 
In four weeks, sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. He's in That's with them. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. All right. And I think that's it for story for at least a few days of the game. Now it's going to be mainly just kind of down to a couple days of some actual work. Now, as I said again, the story does get particularly interesting. There's a choice that I know will be coming up in a few days, I think. I'm not going to say anything beyond that, but it is an interesting one that helps really decide how you're going to actually go about your story. The last few months I've been taking antidepressants three times a day, but today I ran out of my prescription. The pharmacy said they're going to get more in tomorrow, but I'm afraid without the pills I'm not going to be much good. My mind keeps digging up all kinds of disturbing thoughts. Can I go home? Now, this is something that hasn't popped up the last two times I tried to record this, but I know what these are about. You're going to get requests every so often. Um, and you get to decide if they get time off or what's going on. I could say yes. It'd just be like, yeah, you get a free pass. Could say yes, but come tomorrow. I think it's, I usually will do that rather than the straight yes. But it's, it's hard to tell. Now, it, the game says that uh, they can lie to you. They could have secret vices you don't know about. They could have stupid things for all I know. The game says, you know, for all you know, someone could say, hey, uh, my child is sick. Can I go home? But they really just want to go home and get drunk. So sometimes the way they act is supposed to be able to give you an idea on how they do it. To him, I'm just going to say yes, but try to come tomorrow. Now you'll get stripes, which you can use to help make your guys better. I usually give one to Birch because he's one of my slightly lower-ish guys, but one the strip will actually turn to a good level versus a moderate level. So, I'm going to go ahead and start the day. Um, I'm going to avoid any music. Get turn that off, right? Yeah. Um, ah, no, no. Let's just resume the game. Uh, right off the bat, John Cathedral. We received a frightened call from the local cathedral this morning. The abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols and have been broken into pieces. And some have been broken into pieces. It seems that there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. I'm going to send this really, really tough guy with number five, Roy. Yes. Yes. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go in here. This is the labor market, which you'll use to hire people during your time. Like, right now, I have 15 out of 16 cop slots filled and 5 out of 6 detective slots filled. You can have 16 cops right now and 6 detective slots. I, don't, I think that you can increase these numbers, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, I think you can. Again, not 100% sure. I don't know. No, no, no. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, right now, this team, shift A has a few more people on it. Or one extra person. One extra cop, but it has one less detective. So I'm going to hire a decent you, 290 guy for shift B. And I'm going to hire a decent detective for shift A. And that'll help balance those out. They won't show up until the next following day, though. You have sometimes people will quit for various reasons, or they may even die on a certain crime, depending on what it is. Businessman Harvey Harley Jones, looking out his window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans in his car. I've not had any missions that I've noticed that I could throw SWAT in. I don't know. I'm going to send a dolly and... No... Dolly, Birch, and Birch Jr. Sometimes you really got to think, though, about the job because some, if if the wrong, if a situation gets too bad, someone with a low level could actually just cause the mission to fail by doing their own little mistake. Depending, if you get someone really good with them, it should negate that from happening. 
but I'm not 100% sure on all that numbers yet. I kind of want to get some pro kind of squat right. in. Eddie's Burger. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served Chicken Eddie and Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who she's seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting out the window eating a burger. I'm just going to throw Gran in here. Because like I said, I've reported this twice and I know exactly how this one goes out. I'm not going to say it. I'll just let you see it for yourself. Report vandalism. The offender escaped, of course. They were unharmed, but they all lose 10 freaking points. H. <sighs> Alright. I kind of wish I would have had something better for that mission, but I didn't really have anyone okay. that great. Report of Swiss of suspicious individual the waitress's mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. That's why I only sent my weaker the guys, because I knew that's what was going to happen. Now, this is one of those more interesting cases. Um... Mr. Boyd, my bouncer staff, my bun my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again, and now he can't get off the pan. In the meantime, the line outside the club is stretched around the block. We need someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. I am going to send... I don't want to send someone too weak, but I don't want to send Birch, because Birch and Birch Jr., I like to keep them together. But I know what's going to happen. I'm just going to send Roy, because I know what's going to freaking happen here anyways. Roy, I might not, Roy might not actually, and again, Roy is going to just straight up fail. I probably should have waited for Grant. It's one of those ways you can make money, but if they do too good of a job, like in this particular situation, if they do too good of a job, they will quit. Now here, uh, okay, she quit anyways. Now I'm ha I don't care about her quitting, because, again... 15. But I still get paid for it, so it's not my help. Uh, Christopher S. or Christopher G. Sands, Ice Arena. An anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna send, um, this. I'm gonna send Stavall to help make, to help cover for Birch. Uh, suicide threat. I'm gonna send Van Gaal and Grant. A uh, naked man carrying a canister of gasoline is threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. Because, you know, you can obviously change that. Now I'm going to go back into the labor market, hire another decent cop. Here we will hire for shift A to replace the guy who lost. It can get fun. Especially in the later game, when you get a lot more stuff you're going to have to deal with. Okay, the night, however, is over. We do have two people, though. Three people on their own mission. Or what is? I'm confused. I don't know. Ah, uh, Dolly. The offender was caught. The officers were unharmed. So we'll go ahead and get out of that. Uh, I'm, we are gonna. Yeah. As police arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. We're gonna carefully watch from the stands. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Birch Jr. gets his 10 points back from the mission failure. He did a little a little while ago. So, Roy I don't have, but I already got a replacement for her hired, hopefully on the way. I did hire another cop here, so that'll help balance that out. We're going to go ahead and advance to the next day. I think this will be the last day I play for now until the next video, but let's get through it. Whenever I'm alone at home, and there's a knock. Ah, uh, you know what, actually? Hit the door. I On second thought, I forgot how long this particular bit is, and I just passed the checkpoint. Uh, I right. am going to get it out of that for now. I got out of this part of the video a little abruptly. Uh, I didn't, I intended to do an exit part to that, but I forgot that my video stops when I get out of the thing, and I exited out of it the hard way and couldn't poop back into it. So, um, I forgot that there was a piece of video there. I was thinking I had one more night before story, but I was wrong. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that part. It did checkpoint right before the video, so next time I get back, that video will be there. Uh, so I hope that you guys do enjoy the videos. Uh, I will intend to make this a relative steady video. I don't know how often I'll make one. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll figure that out as I go along. Again, I'm sorry for that abrupt ending. 
Uh, but hey, and I hope you guys enjoy my videos, and I hope that I will see you guys on future videos, and I hope that support can continue to grow. I hope, you know, if you guys like my video, go ahead and toss me a like. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed to me already. If you know other people who may like my content, go ahead and share my content around. I do appreciate everything that is done for me. Uh, I do have a Twitter, too. I'll have that in the description. I have a Facebook page that I now have. I'll put that in the description. So, you know, just go ahead and help me out. Share me around. You know, I hope that you guys will enjoy my content and future content. And I'm going to do my best to try to provide the best that I can for you guys. So I want to thank you guys very much, though, again, for watching. Uh, have a great night, great day, great morning, whatever time it is where you guys are. Bye, guys.